It is time to do our first original illustration. We did original logo design last project, but unit 11 is all about illustration. What is illustration? Illustration is art that's made to be reproduced. And it comes from the, the older word in art history, which is illumination. And when we hear illumination, what do we think of? If you were to use illumination in a sentence, it means light, right? Yeah, like bringing light to something. Illustration means the same thing, to bring luster to something, to bring light to something. So illustration almost never functions just on its own. It's always related to something else, related to written content, like an article, or related to a concept, like a band name or an album or a t-shirt that has a brand name on it, you do an illustration that goes with Adidas or goes with Nike or goes with Puma, right? Illustrates that. So illustration is a way of making art to be reproduced that sheds light on some content you're interested in, even if it's own, your own personal ideas. A spot illustration is the kind of illustration that shows up on the, the first page of a young adult novel, you know, at the beginning of each chapter of a young adult novel. If you think of Harry Potter, and I know a lot of people have, have read the Harry Potter books, each chapter starts with a little black and white spot illustration. It's just free floating there above the text. So what is a spot illustration different than like a full page illustration? It's not going to be contained by a rectangle. It needs to be free floating. What's a good way to think of this? Think sticker design. Think t-shirt graphic, think full color logo, not logo, tattoo, sorry. How are they different than logos? Well, t-shirts, or uh, t-shirts, stickers, tattoos, they can be any size you want. They don't need to be as versatile as logos, and they can be more detailed. But they do still need to communicate graphically, pretty clearly, at various sizes, so they are based on line art. So you can see here, we're going to start with a sketch, whether it's a pencil sketch, this is a colored pencil sketch. Then we're going to refine the lines as a vector, whether they're thin lines, whether they're thicker, more gestural lines. And then we're going to add color behind the line art in a raster program. And this is what's called digital coloring. Even if the lines end up getting colored themselves, like you see here, some of the lines get, got turned to different colors. Here, all the lines got turned to this blue color. Here, the blind lines stayed black, right? So what are we learning? All we're doing is finishing assignment five for this unit, but we're learning lots of things. We're learning how to sketch appropriately for your idea. That's your concept. And we're trying to create an original free-floating spot illustration. Can you do, like the Sean Gallery stickers I'm sending around, your own fan art versions of things you like? You can but you cannot sell those, right? You can only use them for educational purpose. If you do something that you do have the rights to, your own original creation, then you will have the option by the end of this project to put it up to your own Redbubble page, make products from it, and sell products from it. And I'll show you how to do that. That's optional, but it's a nice benefit of knowing this technique. We're going to learn the advantages and disadvantages of using vectors for our digital line art, for what's called digital inking. And then we're going to learn what the alternative is, right? A high resolution, just raster inked version. And we're going to learn basic color theory and how to do flat color, to do a tone color, to full spectrum color, and then to special effects where you change the line art to color holds and things floating on top of the line art. And we're going to keep learning digital formats, right? Um, to work effectively. So how do you save your work? How do you split it into multiple channels so it can work for things like screen printing, uh, to work for websites, to work for t-shirt design, that kind of thing, various product options. By the end of this project, you can make a pattern of your spot illustration. You can turn them into leggings or a backpack. All of that's possible. All right. So let's look at some past examples. So this was done before Russia invaded the Ukraine, but Putin was on the scene well before that. And so this was just playing on a pun, right? So illustrations are always informed by something. 
And this one was informed by wordplay, the idea of Putin on the Ritz, right? So this is Putin done as kind of a He-Man character crushing a Ritz cracker. Right. So what does it start with? It starts with just a pencil sketch. If you remember back to when we did our creature design and we had to sketch the anatomy, right? If you're doing something figurative, something living, it's good to remember that and think of the anatomy, kind of build up basic shapes. This can be inspired by lots of things. This was inspired by He-Man, right? And that kind of design. And then by Ritz crackers. And then we convert it to clean line art. And this is vector line art that then we color behind. And even though it's really hard to tell, that line actually changed from black to a dark brown in the final illustration. But it's still underneath line art. We have a pencil sketch here, a little mini Cthulhu. We have uh, more gestural lines. Notice how these lines are a lot thicker in places and thinner in others. It's a different kind of line art than this. And then those lines got replaced. This is duotone soft edge coloring. This is basically duotone soft edged as well. This one is more graphic. It's kind of a badge design. This little werewolf guy. Notice how thin. I like including this one as a past student example because look how thin that digital inking is. And this is more the standard for animation. Animation uses what's called a technical line. So it's always the same line width no matter how much you're zoomed in. And that way it's easy to match frame to frame. And then this has cut edge or hard edge duotone as its coloring method, even though it's subtle. Here we have full spectrum color underneath the vector line art. Here we have duotone hard edge and on and on and on. And then in this last one, there is an added step, which I'll be showing you eventually, either in the next project or in this project. If I can zoom in enough, you can see. <laughs> but it's the difference between it being finished and digital and it being what's called separated, color separated. This is making it ready for lithographic printing or screen printing. And this is exaggerated to look like kind of retro printing. So you can see that it's all broken up into different dots. That's where dots per inch comes in. It's where the Gaussian roses comes in. It's where CMYK color theory comes in, which is one of the learning outcomes for you digital imaging students. So you know what becomes of your, your millions of colored pixels when they actually get printed in the real world. And that's a big part of illustration because, again, they're made to be reproduced. Right? We can see more examples here. This is a, a favorite project each semester. And so we have lots of student examples for their own interests. right? And then you'll be able to make t-shirt designs, stickers of whatever your project might end up being pillows, on and on. So I'm expecting to see a lot of kind of personal aesthetics here. You get to choose the kind of line art. You get to choose the subject matter, but they all need to be free floating, you know, not just filling a rectangle. And then they're going to be used in the next assignment as a poster design with text that we design. So if you like monsters, it's a great one to make a little monster design of. That will probably be my theme next semester. Sometimes they get very cerebral and strange. And no matter how you draw, we can turn this into a professional looking product because going from sketching to line art is really refining all your edges. And this is inspired by a 20th century Fox, I think, and Dom Blues, the rats of Nim. But like Arturo Herrera does with Disney characters, they've modified it quite a bit to make it into their own thing. So on and on and on. So if you don't have an idea for yourself for what to do, I, I just recommend doing the spirit animal theme 
you know, animals are always fun. And you can make it celestial. You can make it otherworldly. Here we have a little spirit animal. <laughs> and they just keep going. You know, lots and lots of examples. The other opportunity we have is at the beginning of April, from April 8th to April 11th, the school will be select, um, accepting submissions for the spring student show, the annual student show. And this is a really good project to print for that. You do not have to submit. It's outside of the class. But your work can, uh, can get you money if you submit it. And this project, in fact, this one, you know, sold when it was put into the student show. And I, I'm a big fan of sticker design, so I always like to see things as stickers. Now, this is a nice example for those of you who are thinking of kind of a more story-based image, which can be more challenging. So they wanted to show, you know, a sheep sleeping, dreaming of counting sheep. And so they have this whole scenario, and it seems so natural. This is like a children's book illustration that it would fill the rectangle, right? But to turn it into a spot illustration, all you have to do is be conscious about that outside shape. So they turned it all into kind of a, a thought cloud. And that makes it a spot illustration. Same thing here. A girl in her bed, sleeping, dreaming, come up with interesting shapes. So spot illustrations are all about being a self-contained, free-floating shape. So many examples. All right. You can use this for Christmas cards for character design, for weird Texas related stuff. And you can do fan art, but make sure you modify it enough that it is your own, right? And that's up to you. That's why you can do this on your own product page. I have no liability for, for <laughs> what you put up on the internet and sell. But this was my version of My Little Pony, right? I called it My Belittled Donkey. But it's very different than My Little Pony, and I haven't gotten sued yet or had, had the work removed. So again, you can be inspired by things, but you have to transform it into your own content. On and on and on. And then spot illustrations can be really versatile. They can even be turned into textile patterns. So we'll be learning about all of that, either this assignment or next assignment. Scarves. Stickers, t-shirts, clothing, backpacks, all that kind of stuff. All right, so let's go to it. If you ever want to work ahead, remember that we have the YouTube channels. And just look for the spot illustration assignment under our playlists. And you don't have to wait for me to demonstrate something before you can try it yourself. Especially because I know we have some, some students that already do things like this, you know, for themselves. Do character designs or do uh, commissions. So under playlist, just look for the spot illustration assignment. In the recent semesters, it was assignment five, right? So if we look at last semesters, I ended up doing these kind of, these creature designs. And it starts with line art, starts with sketching, then digital inking, whether we do it with freeware or whether we do it with, with Adobe products, and then all the different color options. And then if you go to assignments, instead of through the unit module as your shortcut, which I'll do for every other video when I get into the project, you'll notice with assignment five, there are lots of links to resources including ones, all three of these are from past students. So let's go right to the assignment. So we're going to use a mix of vector line art with raster coloring to complete this project. This is my little demo sheet of it. You can also find this under the links page. If we were going to illustrate a lemon, the first thing we do is sketch it try to get the basic shapes, try to get the, the overall shape we want. Then we would trace it and clean it up with vector line art. 
There's a, a variety of 